This is so awesome. I love, I happen to love this weather. It's time to get cozy. Feel the wind on our skin. Feels so good. Um, we're going to have our land acknowledgement now. So please um, welcome Esau Purtle Wright. Hello, can you hear me? All right. Yes. I introduce myself in all three of my traditional languages. I come and have been on this land for thousands and thousands of years. Today I stand for my Waxkini people of the lake, the Klamath Modoc people. As, uh, as a warrior, as a water protector. So I want to talk to you first before anything is about our water, our umbo, our chush. As our waters have been being put, uh, dams have been put up onto our lands, poisoning our waters. So I want to talk to you guys about bringing awareness about the dams and the climate oh, and rivers in our rivers. Also, I want to thank all the protectors who went and uh, spoke and protested about this yesterday. Where we land is Chinook land. Chinook have lived part from part of the uh, ocean all the way over here. Up the river is the Wishram. Up the river more is the uh, Nez Perce, the Umatella. So everywhere you go in North America, Canada, Alaska, the Hawaiian Islands, everywhere you go is indigenous land. People have lived here, have died here for thousands and thousands of years. I come from warriors, and I come to stand with you and to bring awareness because our children matter. Our black, indigenous, our any, all of our children matter. So I'm looking at all you young ones. How are you young ones doing today? Are you guys doing okay? I want you all to raise your hand if you're enjoying today. Oh, you are all so beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for having my voice heard. Thank you so much, Isha. Such a blessing to have you here. And, um... We are so happy that Awakening Thunder was here to set the tone for us today. So let's give it up for Awakening Thunder. So a few things. Um, these shirts have been donated, Vote With Love, and they are free. And if you want one, they are available right over here. So stop over and get your Vote With Love shirt. And we also were so happy we have PDX Love Over Hate here today. So Camila Adams of Me Meets Fresh Teas is going to come up and tell you how PDX Love Over Hate started. And Jason Bloom Clouts is also um, part of this organization. They formed it together. So give it up, please, for PDX Love Over Hate. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. My name is Camila Adams. I'm the owner of uh, Mimi's Fresh Teas. And this is one of my shirts, Make Racism Wrong Again, right? Yeah. So back in July, I received a horrifying hate mail to my uh, home address that was that said it would murder me and my daughter just for making social justice t-shirts. Uh, the letter was just horrifying and evil. And I wanted to share that letter with people in Portland because Black people, people of color in Portland, Oregon, and Oregon are still not safe, and it's 2020. Um, but I, it was just a terrible time in my, you know, in July. And my friend Jason and uh, called me, and 
the community just showed me love and that's where PDX Love Over Hate originated. Because I would not have been able to go through that terrible moment if it wasn't for my community members, friends, and family. So this is how PDX Love Over Hate came about because we wanted to reclaim the space back and we wanted kids of color to ride their bikes in the neighborhood and see these signs and know that this house is a safe house for them. So I'm not gonna take too much of your time talking, but that is how PDX Love Over Hate started. And Jason, please add something. Yeah, so um, you can go to the website and see more about the story. Um, there's links for uh, uh, donating if you wish. The goal is to spread this across the entire city, everywhere we go. So we give them away, but if you want to donate, it helps us keep moving across the city. Um, this is about love over hate. And um, we're going to be uh, doing some distributions in different neighborhoods. So look, pay attention, sign up on our volunteer list if you want to know more about how to help us do that. We gave away a thousand in the neighborhood that we come from, Irvington. Um, and you know we're going to be keep moving across the city until we have the city covered. So thank you very much, and we appreciate um, Sunnyside and Destiny and Jamie and all those folks who invite us here today to give us a platform. Thank you very much. Thank you, Awakening Thunder, too. Thank you for being here. Thank you. 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 <laughs> Thank you. That is really important. We do have to continue to wear our masks, practice social distancing, use our hand sanitizer, wash our hands. Um, it is very important. I think I read today that we did have over 500 new cases in Oregon. So we do have to remain vigilant. Um, so thank you, Denali, for keep helping keeping me safe, keeping us all safe. Um, I wanted to once again say thank you so much to uh, Camila and Jason because what a beautiful example for all the kids. What a beautiful example of taking something absolutely horrific that happened and trying to turn it in to something beautiful for not only yourself, but for your entire community and for other communities. And what a beautiful way for all of us to participate in saying that here in Portland, love will win over hate. So thank you for giving us a way to express that, Camila and Jason. And real quick, just to plant the seed. Oh, another thing, um, we have a wonderful donation of hot chai tea. So on this cold fall day, if you're wanting to warm up your hands, um, please feel free to stop by PDX Resistance Assistance and get some delicious uh, chai tea. And then I wanted to see a show of hands because I didn't mention this prior. Or do I have any kids here today that would want to share with us what the Kid Centered March for Black Lives has been like for you, what you've experienced, what you've learned, or just anything that's on your heart today that has to do with marching for black lives. Um, so if you raise your hand, I'll get an idea if anyone is comfortable doing that without any warning. And if anyone is, we'll do it. And if not, then I'll plant the seed for next time. Okay, that looks like a next time. I don't see any hands. I'm gonna look one more time, I'm scanning. <laughs> Okay, so for all the kids here, if you're planning to be here in our November March, we want to give you the opportunity to share uh, what's on your heart. And it could be one sentence, it could be one word that represents to you what this summer and now moving into fall and winter um, in this fight for black lives, what it has been like for you or something you have learned or taken away. So now I am going to... So uh, in, the, in, the <laughs> in all transparency, this is a first for us, and it's okay, things happen. We do have speakers for you, but everyone is having a little bit of trouble getting here. So um, that's one reason we were gonna give kids an opportunity to speak. But I'm gonna go ahead and share with you that I had planned to read a list to you today, sadly of all the people that have been killed in 2020 
by police in our country. But when I went to find the list, there were 164 names on it. 164 black people have lost their lives to police brutality in 2020. That is one person a week. And I had planned to share a little bit about each person, and there is no way I can do justice to 164 people. And so what I want us to do is take in the magnitude of that number into our hearts. And when we're marching, when we're writing, when we are sharing, when we're interrupting racism in our families, in our friendships, in our daily lives, we need to carry that number in our hearts. And we do need to continue to say the names of George Floyd, say his name. George Floyd. And Breonna Taylor, say her name. Breonna Taylor. And Ahmaud Arbery, say his name. Ahmaud Arbery. And Tony McDade, say his name. Tony McDade. And we really do need to learn the names of the people in our own city. So it is important, parents, to take that time to find out who is Kendra James, who is Quanice Moose Hayes, who is Aaron Campbell, who is Christopher Kalanji, who is Kendra James. So um, with that, I do see one of our speakers. If everyone can give it up for Demetria Hester. Demetria is a mother. She is a strong, beautiful black woman. She is an activist in our community who has been fighting for black lives her whole life, but especially starting in 2017 with the Jeremy Christensen trial. Um, so we are in the presence of somebody who has truly embodied what it means to stand up for herself, to fight for justice. She tried to tell the police what had happened to prevent him from harming someone else. They did not listen. And when he did harm someone else, she was there to testify to make sure he could not harm anyone else again. She is the leader of Moms United for Black Lives. She is at everything. <laughs> and it is so meaningful to me that um, she has been coming to the Kid Centered March for Black Lives and asking the moms to show up here for us as well. So please give a warm welcome to Demetria Hester. All these beautiful faces. Um, oh my God, I am a mom, a grandma. I'm a human being. I'm a queen. Um, I'm empowered by everyone I always see when I come to every event because this is what we do. I'd love to see you guys. Give yourself a round of applause. That was so weak. Give yourself a round of applause. Twenty-four seven, three sixty-five. Black Lives Matter, and we're here to prove that. And no one can stop us. No one can break us. We're not going to stop until we get justice. We're, we're here today for what? For what? For what? For who? For what? We have to always remember that these children are our future. They're woke. They're waking up everyone. And I love it. This is our future. We have to keep them empowered. We have to let them know that they have the right to fight. They have a right to stand up for what is right. 
to not be afraid, to stand with no fear, because that's what we need. We have to be strong. Do you see the unity that we have right now? Look around you. This is unity. This is what our community needs and need to look like. Always. Don't we want to play together? I like fun, you see. I like to play. I like to engage without any fear of being judged. Don't you want the same? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. <clears throat> I want to talk about another thing that's really, really important right now. We as black women have always been trying to voice ourselves without being judged or being silenced. And it's extremely hard when we have a lot of white supremacists trying to silence us. Teresa Rayford is our community. She's there when no one else is there. She's there for everyone. And we know this. That's why we're writing her in, correct? I've already did mine. I've already did mine. And today I was informed that Wheeler and Sarah wants to silence our mayor, our queen. They said that she cannot promote herself. Another way to try to silence black women. Are we going to stand for that? No. Are we going to stand for that? No. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Don't we want our mayor? Don't we want our mayor? They are afraid. They're so scared because she's winning. They're scared. They're trying to pull out all kinds of tactics. It's not gonna work because she is our community and power is in the people, correct? Yeah. Who makes the votes? Yeah. Who makes the votes? Yeah. Who makes the votes? Yeah. The people! Our children know that the people make the votes. We know. They know too, that's why they're scared. Because we are breaking this system down. We're not stopping. We're not stopping. That's right, baby, we're not. I heard you, baby. We're not. I'm going to Washington for this impeachment. I'm about change. That's what this is about, change. And we're going to fight and never give up because our mayor is the first stop and every other city is going to be the next stop. We're going to have reparations. We're going to have true freedom to walk around and be happy and heal. Because that's what our community needs and that's what this looks like, correct? Yeah. We're tired of walking around here getting silent. How can you silence a black woman? You can't. You can't. We come back harder. You say shut up, we say you shut up. <laughs> Who you talking to? We get things done and they're afraid of our voices. We all have voices. Use your voice 
right now for change. Get our mayor in office. Continue to support Black Lives Matter 365-2407. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Put your fist up. Black Lives Matter! 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 Whose Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter! you're part of. We are going down in history. We are going down in history to make this change. Are you coming with us? Yeah. Are you coming with us? Yeah. Are you staying with us? Yeah. Are you staying woke? Yeah. Stay 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 woke? Yeah. Everyone, stay woke. Tell everybody, stay woke. Stay woke. Tell everybody, stay woke. Do not fall asleep. This is not the time. This is not the time. Stay woke. We have love. Look at our community and our hearts. We're spreading this love around the world that everyone is seeing. That is the community that sticks together and works together. It's our community that loves one another and helps one another. It's our community that's gonna get our mayor, mayor. It's our community that helps raise our children to be successful people. It's our community that sticks together and love one another. Who got our back? Who got our back? Who got our back? I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. You got my back. I got your back. I got your back. 247365. Know that. Love you. Can any of you kids guess what Demetria is going to be for Halloween? <laughs> any guesses? Oh, very good. Y'all are so smart. <laughs> oh, what a cozy way to come out for fall. I'm going to get some. What should I get? Any ideas? If I get some, who should I be? What? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. What did you say? <laughs> okay, I'll do my best to find that. So... Now we have Imani Warnum. She is a junior in high school. She was born and raised in Southeast Portland. She aspires to one day be a psychiatrist for children with autism. And she is going to share an original poem with us. Please welcome Imani. My name's Imani. I was born and raised in Southeast Portland, but I now live in Hillsboro. Um, I wrote this during the first three nights of the protest. I did not sleep for like 72 hours. I was so stressed. <laughs> but, well, here we go. Dear people who think that they are better than because of the color of their skin and or who choose to stay neutral in the face of oppression, you need to get over your discomfort. You need to have the conversations of the people who are hurt. Because the oppressed 
are tired of the feeling of overexert. Ignorance is your dessert, but your bliss is yet another black person's death certificate. Because we are killed, even when just kicking it, until black lives are something of significance, we will be treated well by you only in remembrance. Until you treat our lives with less arrogance, until you accept that what has been done is done, and ask the white Jesus that you have preached to us for repentance, then we will not dis receive deliverance. We will not receive freedom from the shackles of oppression. For the land of the free is not always the case for those who face this type of aggression. We help fight for the home of the brave, but back home are faced with repression. Repression of the freedoms we help fight for and hate because of the culture you pretend to adore. Our breaks, music, and slang mean so much more. So do not appropriate a culture you kill people for. Do not call us monsters while you sit by and watch as our dead bodies hit the floor and ignore our pain because you do not understand that we are fighting a civil war. The United States Civil War did not end in 1865 because the Confederates' voices still roar. They roar in the ears of those whose ancestors didn't know how to close that door. Those same people have been feeding their children feelings of superiority, and that is why so many people think that this isn't an issue of priority. But I thought that history repeating itself was knowledge of the majority. You whipped us, hung us, beat us, shot us, and suffocated us. Yet you expect us not to even make a fuss? And you wonder why new generations work to achieve success. Because having children is almost selfish in the midst of this mess. We even started to choose to be alone as we success because it can be so hard to see the good in people as the world is so cruel, so instead alone we soar. You felt as if you could take whatever you wanted since you hit the American shore and you blurred lines of treaties galore, but we will not let you silence our voices anymore because without building this country, not only on stolen land, but the backs of slaves, you would have nothing to fight for. You have even tried to not let technology advance so that you can dehumanize us more. We have waited too long for our rights for them to just be ignored. So I don't understand why so many are surprised by this uproar. But the civil rights movement taught us that violence should not be its encore, and we should honor those who fought for our future not so far before. Racism is not something of the past if you open your eyes, you may gasp when you realize that the white are privileged for the color of their skin. We are killed by the blue who are supposed to protect us, and our blood stains the streets red. That is our red, white, and blue. The shock and fear of our struggle turns so many of you into an incoherent puddle. But when you are faced with death every day, you learn to make your existence subtle. Over time, the feeling of being invisible hurts but it's better to hide in plain sight than worry about your mother crying as they're taken away in a hearse. This should not be taken lightly, and although you will never, never fully understand, please help us fight for the justice that we command. Racism affects all of us, even if it's backhand. So treat us like humans so this violence can forever disband. Wow, give it up for Imani. <laughs> listening to that, listening to young people just blow my mind. That's what gives me hope. So that was incredible. Thank you. Yeah, let's give it up one more time. That's amazing.
Okay, and now we have our very own Alicia Hopes, who is gonna share with us. She's the mom of two wonderful young kings who we also are so lucky to have in our community. She's passionate about actively dismantling systems of oppression. She truly believes that you must refocus your focus and find the balance. She stands by the notion that together we can and we will. You can find her organizing, uplifting, teaching, encouraging, and lending out a helping hand to those both near and far. Alicia is the change she wants to see. And she urges all of us to understand that the youth are our past, our present, and our future. Please give it up for Alicia Hope. Can y'all hear me all right? I said hello, good and beautiful individuals sharing space today. I love each and every one of you. I love you to life. I love each and every one of you. We are our ancestors' wildest dreams. We do this thing called life together. And as one of my young little friends, he said, you're gonna do good, you always will. Talk about being recharged. Talk about just sharing space and loving one another and just remembering our why, remembering why we are here. We are here to also amplify the voices of those that are of the youth, those that are going to become, those that are our future lawyers, our doctors, our politicians, our kings and our queens. We are here because we are anti-racist individuals. You know, it was said that I am the least racist, and I thought you were supposed to not be racist at all. The opposite of racist is not non-racist, it's being anti-racist. So again, it's not enough to not be racist, you have to be anti-racist. So as I was listening to, yeah, you can give yourselves a round of applause. We are striving and we are striving to be the humans that we need to be. We are in this beautiful space of reimagining and oh, is it a time to be alive. So as I was listening to Dr. Love, we want to do more than survive. And as I was also listening to the color of law, I decided that I need to bring some tangible items. So I'm gonna do this really quickly because we pour life and we do life with one another and it is my pleasure and my honor to be here each and every time with you. So we are going to pour love and sow seeds of encouragement and determination into one another. So we are outside. You can totally use your outside voices, y'all. I am strong. I am powerful. I am unique. I am unique. I am resilient. I am resilient. So I have a few books for readers, early readers, experienced readers, readers that just love to listen, readers that like to read your family members to sleep, readers that like to read your readers to life. So give me one second. This is called a backpack and I got a bunch of goodies in my backpack because language is powerful. Language, when we put it down on paper and it's in black and white, it becomes policy and it becomes resolution and it becomes the hope that we are needing to desperately see in this world. So, first book. If you're wondering what can you do, you can also start a book club. You can read for yourself. You can read for others. You can just read to be empowered because knowledge is powerful and we are all beautiful beings. The first book is called The Color of Law by Richard. Oh, for my young readers, for some of the people that they say, oh, how do I start talking about racism and social justice? This wonderful book, Something Happened in Our Town, a child's story about racial injustice. This is written by Marianne Solano, Marietta and Anne. Oh, this was a great one when I was in undergrad. Multiplication is for white people. Raising expectations for other people's children by Lisa Delpit. 
Lies, my teacher told me. Oh, this is a great one. This is a wonderful one. As I continue on to higher education, let me reintroduce yourself. Hello, my name is Dr. Carter. Again, I will say that again, as I am continuing on my journey to higher education, academia is very important to me to have a strong educational foundational background. But again, I don't need a piece of paper to tell me who I truly am. Again, I'm going to reintroduce myself. My name is Dr. Carter, and it's nice to meet you all. Another great read is called Black Bodies, White Gazes, The Continuing Significance of Race. Oh, this is what my sweet Avery loves. We hold it very close to us. Anti-Racist Baby by Dr. Kendi. Another great one by Dr. Kendi, stamped from the beginning. And yes, we also have the younger readers version as well. Yes, yes, yes. Another one, So You Want to Talk About Race. Last and certainly not least, and I am very mindful, so if it looks like the books are just popping on the ground, it is still all in respect, and it is still all in love. The last one, The Meaning of Freedom by Angela Y. Davis. This is certainly not all. Please educate yourselves, educate those around you, and love everyone to life. I love you all. Give another round of applause, please, for Dr. Carter. Okay, I know Ariana is here, but I don't see her. Right here. Oh, she's right here. So um, we are so lucky also we get to hear from Ariana Moorhead of Fridays for Freedom. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to be at the front of a march when she's leading, but it's incredible and I would encourage y'all to do that if you have not had that opportunity. Uh, Ariana, so Ariana is a youth leader for Fridays for Freedom. She is also, I'm going to say this right, so sorry, give me a second. Didn't have my notes up. There it is. Okay. She is our Miss Black Teen Oregon International Ambassador. And she aspires to become an OBGYN to improve infant and maternal outcomes for the black community. Please give it up for Ariana. Hi guys, I'm Ariana. Before I go into my topic of what I wanna be talking about, I'm gonna, I wanna encourage you guys to come to Fridays for Freedom next event, which is on November 7th. Uh, we have flyers on our Instagram, which is Fridays for, like the number, Freedom on Instagram. And you'll see all about our March that's on November 7th. Um, we we're doing a march in Southwest Portland to like call out like, white fragility and like white silence and everything. So yeah, if you want to know more about that, just go on our Instagram and find it there. Um, as Destiny had mentioned, I'm Miss Black Teen Oregon International Ambassador. <laughs> and like as an ambassador of change, it's my job to you know encourage people and educate them on like things that are important to me because you know. I I want to I would want to know what other people know like wait I said that wrong but like everything you know that I don't know I would want to know if that makes sense <laughs> um so yeah I just want to talk to you guys about getting involved at a young age I've been like protesting and stuff since I was 12 so now here we are like five years later and it's like I want this is something I'm really passionate about something that nobody ever talks about something an opportunity that I had to look for and it wasn't given to me activism is really like an opportunity to be involved to like you know be a part of so I feel like the younger you get involved the younger you know start calling out racism the, the younger you recognize racism 
the younger that you, you know, learn about these like controversial topics that they don't teach you in schools, the more prepared you will be when, you know, you when you get older and you actually like witness something happen to a black person, you know, the like the more you know about it, the more comfortable you'll be, you know, the more you can give out more Sorry. I, I kind of like lost it there, but I think you guys get the overall idea. I want, I really want to be an OBGYN because there's not enough black OBGYNs. And something I always, something that always reminds me of why I want to become an OBGYN is something I saw on Instagram. And it was doctors to black women are like cops to black men. Yep. And it's sad, and it's so sad that like we're losing women of color every single day because women of color are so beautiful. They all have culture, they all have background. They all have so something so beautiful compared to like white people. They're just like white people, you know, they got really kind of a culture, but you know, it's just like new babies born into this new generation. We have to prepare them for this type of thing. This is just the 2020 is probably like an, another repeat of history. They're probably gonna be like talking about this in like 2040. They're gonna be like, you know, Portland, Oregon, you know, George Floyd. So the more we continue to educate our children, the more that they can pass down the knowledge to like younger siblings, older siblings, just continue to I'll go back to my idea. Um, Oh, and hopefully once I get everything situated, I can open up a clinic up in here in Portland, Oregon, um, and have like all black staff, like nurses, receptionists, to make a more of like a comfortable setting, comfortable vibe for black women to, you know, and trusted pregnancies too. Like I want my clinic to be like fully trusted to not only women of color, but like all women, you know? There are a lot of perverted, male OB, OBGYNs and it's just like disgusting that they don't get called out because there are good OBGYNs but there are some OBGYNs that need to you know tone it down a bit but um it's, you guys have a lot of time well, like this is to the kids or not really for the less younger people but the kids you know just think about Think about what you're doing at this age. And then like, once you get older, you're gonna be like, wow, I did that. And it's like a good, strong feeling. Like, you're gonna be like, I am anti-racist at five years old. You can't tell me nothing. Like, just continue to be strong, feel empowered. Think about your future. Think about how you're, if you ever think about doing something that's like, white privilege or like racist a little bit think about what you're doing and how your actions will affect you in the long run and how it will affect the people of color around you. So those relationships matter i'm telling you you can have you know your your black friends but those relationships are needed those relationships build community so therefore get out and explore educate yourselves educate your peers just every educate everyone. We have another round of applause for Ariana. And let's give a big round of applause because we're going to get our energy up for Awakening Thunder. For Camila Adams and Jason. One clap. And, oh good, it looks like you guys picked up your t-shirts. Let's have a big round of applause for Nadine Thelma, please. The motorcade, our medic, our bike. We're so grateful for everyone that makes this happen. 
And we are so grateful for all of you. We have, we do have our donation table back here. We are supporting Water is Life for the Warm for Confederate tribes of Warm Springs. And we also rely on your donations, your very generous donations to support this march. So if you are able to donate, we so appreciate it. You can, um, you can take a picture of our Venmo up here. You can also look for us on the Kids Centered March for Black Lives Facebook page. And if you are not able to donate, you can share, which also really helps us out. So again, we are so grateful to see all of you out here marching with us today. So let's get our energy up, kids. We're gonna um, borrow from for a second. One with Heart on Popcorn again. It's my favorite one. So if Awakening Thunder wants to help me out, we're gonna either we can um, pat our legs like this or you can pat the ground. And I always forget this part, so at the end this time we're gonna say a big yes at the end, because that's just awesome, I love that part. So here we go. I am a strong and powerful kid. 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 Okay, one time as loud as we can. I am a strong and powerful kid. Okay, are y'all ready to march? Okay, let's march!
What's your little handle? This? Uh, like 80 back up. Okay. Anything that's nicer, um, you know, the, the more expensive one is nicer because it's got a better walking mechanism there. Uh, so it feels like it'll be pretty strong. But I kept breaking this thing. So I have this for the pole. Or this. What else got one of those like that? Uh, <laughs> just in case. Just so used to things breaking. <laughs> I want one of those so bad, but I feel like... What, the, the take, Ronin? Yeah, I feel like it would take like time to work, because it's a lot more complicated. Um, it takes some getting used to, but it's still easy, especially if you use DJI stuff. You could like, customize how fast it like... Yep, yep. It can get pretty complicated, but you can also just use it pretty easily.
Stabilization, like there's no, there's no vibration relief on, on just this. Yeah, or when, it's for, on the scooter? For, when it's on the scooter, oh, yeah. 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 Hey, those, like, hydraulic arms. Is this an R2? Uh, it's a running SC. SC. So it's like the second. Hold on, let's see.
Oh, you got to get the mask up. Oh, you got to get the mask up. Oh, you the mask up. Oh, you got to get the mask up. Oh, you got to get the I don't know if anybody's figured it out yet. I'm not watching the chat, but at least you can all see the different chats in the, on the stream. We're also being broadcast on the 24 hour crowd stream on YouTube. So check out the YouTube link in the description. More work to do. But, uh, that's about it for this event. We got Adam and Adam Costello and Tipe Lomax here, also streaming. Wanted to catch a different perspective. Um, yeah, it's nice to be back out. It's been a little while. So, again, hope everybody. Uh, Got some something good out of this. I thought it was amazing. We will do this again next week, perhaps. Also, keep an eye out for me tomorrow. Probably gonna be downtown with Lorenzo doing flowers for my birthday. So, see you then. Thanks for watching. <laughs>